Now, I've always found it incredibly cliche to start out a video with a definition, but this time is cool because I'm going to start off with two. All right, I've been trying to make a profession out of being a quote unquote creative for a while now. Like at a point, I thought Tumblr was a good website. That's how long I've been doing this shit. And ever since I started stealing my mom's laptop to make webcam vlogs, I've heard two particularly negative words thrown around. Well, one's a word and the other one's a phrase. It's semantics for real. The word being sellout, which is someone who gives up artistic integrity for money, recognition, et cetera, et cetera. And the phrase being don't do it for the money, do it because you love it, which literally defines itself. Like, I don't think I gotta explain it. Do I gotta explain it? Now, a lot of people think these are super negative and harmful things to be, but if we being honest, I don't think there's anything really wrong with it. Now, a lot of you may think I'm just saying this because I'm broke which I am. I had two stale hamburger buns for dinner last night. It was terrible. But now I promise you these things are logically flawed to be negative. And I'm gonna tell you why uh, via a wonderful story. Uh, so you're welcome. All right, boom, let me set the scene for you guys. Four years ago, high school, senior Richie. I was standing in part of a nine person circle in the middle of a field doing this yearly ritual. Wait, what? No, wait, PJ, you're not supposed to come in until like 5.02, remember? Okay, yeah, I know, but what did you just describe? It's just, it's like it's like a school thing. A school thing? Where you summon Satan? What? No. Well, like, kinda. I, I, let me, give me, give me like a couple minutes, all right? See, in high school, I had a pretty solid idea of my life direction. I was a pretty creative boy. I had a YouTube channel with my friend Damien. We like ran about stuff and flirt with random high schoolers and malls. It, it, it was a, it was a weird time. And I was pretty adept at filming, editing, and disappointing my parents. So it's pretty obvious that I was gonna go into media. But he didn't. But I didn't. I was gonna be a computer science major. It was kind of whatever to me though, to be honest. Now I wanted to go into media, specifically to bolster a potential career as a YouTuber. But I thought YouTubers used like really slimy tactics that took away from the integrity of their product. Kind of by like manipulating their audience on my Bobby Burns-ish. Popular topics to get recommended, sponsors for the money, grabby titles for the views, and worst of all, collabs so they could get fans. Like, yo, come on now. Hey, wait. 502 PJ. But something that really got under my skin was people that cut corners on YouTube. If you have the ability to do something better, why not do that, boy? Kind of like how story time animators get flack for not making like fully animated characters and using that lazy bounce method. That I'm using currently. Also, side note, a lot of y'all think I'm an animator. Okay, I'm not. Vibby draws my stuff. Uh, say hi, Vibby. When am I coming back? Ah, yeah, she's great. See, to put it pretty simply, I thought these people were sellouts because they sacrificed the creative integrity of their videos. Doing that so they can make money. And as we all know, yep, yep, say it with me. You, you should, should do it. You 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 love it. Yeah, I was a pretty prideful dude. He still, he still is. Yo, I know. But all that changed that day in the circle. The summoning circle. I feel like you don't know how long five minutes is. See, at the end of each year, our school hosts this thing called senior camp. It's basically like a glorified halfway house between high school and college, but like in a children's park. We're doing an activity where we'd stand in a circle and write on a piece of paper what we want it to be. And then put that paper in a hat and pass it around and try to guess who would be in what major and whatnot. So if we were summoning Satan, Satan is actually $15,000 in unpaid, unsubsidized Stafford loans. Now, the fatal flaw in this game is that, you know, on a day that literally revolves around learning about your future, probably don't want to make an activity uh, about it because we talked about what major everyone was getting into on the bus ride over like a big oversight on their part actually now as the hat went around the circle i was planning on putting down computer science because i'm a dumbass but as the people put their answers in the hat i couldn't help but flash back to the bus and remember what each of them already chose and they're all just so like, i'm gonna be honest Boring. Finance. Uh, IT. Management. What is what is management? Actuary. Do you know what an actuary is? No diss to like the people who want to go into like finance though. <laughs> so bad. That's, that's not wrong with that. It was crazy that everyone was cool with it. I was like, oh yeah, it's going, going for that. Like, what? What? And it kind of made me sit there and think. I think I stopped like the tax guy and I was like, yo, why would you want to pick one of those majors? Like, like, do you don't think that's boring? Then he said to me, Something that kind of like changed my whole perspective. Well, I mean, we're just doing it for the money. And then that's when it all clicked. When the hack came to me, I put down a different answer that day. YouTuber. I actually regret that a lot. Everyone laughed at me, it was really corny, and I went into computer science for two years and hated my life. But still, I, I learned something that day that changed my whole direction. I learned do it for the love, not the money was wrong. But how did we get here? 
Well, to help me explain, I brought uh, the wonderful PJ. That's your cue. A. See, my friends picked their careers and jobs because they paid well, not because they loved it. And they weren't sellouts. They're just, you know, trying to like live. And this made me realize, oh, people need money to like live. <laughs> the person doing it for the money isn't necessarily doing it because of greed, but you know, feed themselves, bars. Same thing applies to creatives chasing a dream. But how do you know they need to use those tactics that you didn't like? Well, not everybody does, but I do know that to make a dream work, it needs to be profitable. And you know, one becomes that by getting money and attention. Not to mention for any passion that's starting out, you don't really get paid a lot. And that's especially true for people doing the YouTube thing. You got ad rates, demonetization, and tactics like popular topics and clicky titles help for people like me who aren't, you know, talented. Great, good at making videos. The next best thing, we'll go with that one. That seems really superficial, guys. Yeah, it does seem that way, but it's necessary to actually turn what we do into a job. Because to invest in YouTube as a career, you kinda need to garner that attention from an audience in order to make a decent living. Clicks and views mean money, and money means bills get paid. It's not impossible to earn that money through other tactics, but it's still incredibly hard to do on this platform as a whole. Well, how do you know it's hard? Because we be doing it, ho. That was a little aggressive. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call y'all hoes. This is like my 9th rewrite, and I no longer fear death. So that's concerning, but you guys are beautiful people, I'm sorry. On this platform, what you want to do and what works are not mutually exclusive. Just because you make a good video doesn't mean it's shareable and practical on the platform to give views. So you might have to conform with it to what works. You have to make thumbnails that'll get clicked on, choose topics that people care about, do collabs to help bolster that, even picking a style that will let you upload consistently. Again, relating to the animator example Kurt mentioned earlier. And sponsorships and stuff help too, since CPM is atrocious. Someone please sponsor me. But what about creative integrity? I feel like the questions are like slowly getting more sassy. Well, that's the thing. If you're gonna take that route and you're doing it right, Right, you'll most definitely still have your creative integrity. If you're gonna make a thumbnail, make it as clickable as possible. But, but maybe do it without the, the boobs. Like to be clear, we're not saying to pull a Jake Paul and advertise your merch 80 times to kids who still have to walk in line to get to class, no. I'm just saying contrary to popular belief, you can do a video on a popular topic and try a sponsorship and still make a good, original, unique video. Aren't those tactics kind of bad though? Depends. What matters most is if this stuff is ethical. Are you balancing what works with what you want to do? There's nothing wrong with making a story video about how you got kidnapped. It's intriguing. It's eye-popping. It works. But you better actually got your ass swiped, for real. Listen, yo, moral of the story, the, yo, editing Kurt, throw up like a random clip make me sound like inspirational and shit. Thank you. I, I, I wouldn't call people sellouts necessarily. Obviously there are some, but I think in a lot of cases, it's more so people not just doing it for the money, but they love this thing and they wanna keep doing this thing. So they should do it for the money so they can keep doing this thing. If that makes any sense. Regardless, it's cool y'all. As long as you're staying ethical and that's what really matters. But you know, that's just my opinion. Oh, what's up y'all? Damn, you know it's been a while because I have a whole ass patchy beard <laughs> also you know i'm tired because i'm just i'm not even using the mic on the camera i'm using this mic actually that would imply that it's more work whatever i typically try to avoid long end cards but i i think that i they're unavoidable this time because i just want to like make sure y'all get the point like again i'm like i don't want to sound like entitled in this video or anything i, I should i'm the last person to be like that i don't deserve anything <laughs> i'm also still sick like i was i was sick for a long time that wasn't the reason i wasn't putting videos out though just school and and all that fun fun stuff but yeah I, I wanted to make sure i also wanted to talk about just real real quick like also it's okay to do like a side job like if that's a reason you have for not wanting to do the tactics and whatnot and that's cool that's completely fine but i don't think that means other people still can't use the tactics like use that as a reason because if you're work if you have like another job it takes away time from you working on that job thus my month and a half i hate this also my birthday wasn't too long ago i'm 22 now so that's cool i feel old i would like to stop aging now but uh yeah that's really about it i think oh no and of course one more thing a big gigantic thank you to my wonder what wonder wonder a big gigantic wonderful thank you to my friend tj she's fantastic uh go check her out she's like mom She's so good. Thank you for voicing these lines. Here's a line she said because <laughs> I, I, I wanted I wanted to put it on here. I thought it was hilarious. What's up, Drum Alert Nation? Ah, <laughs> uh, Kurt, I hope you regret. I hope you regret this. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's about it. 
I I really try to avoid long end cards because the audience retention. Y'all don't care. I don't care. Y'all don't care. And if you like that video, um, I think you'll really like my last video. Uh, when I talked about what I talk about, <laughs> I'm so tired. I think you'll really like my last video where I talked about um, liking animated girls. Um, it's a very fun one. It's definitely worth a watch. But hey, thank you guys for watching. Uh, really appreciate you. Peace.